Hi, my name is Mike Clark and I am a Christian counselor and in this video I would like to talk with you about conflict resolution and specifically how to avoid conflict and how to resolve conflicts in your marriage. First, let's look at how we can avoid conflicts. Now, avoiding conflicts can be handled the right way and the wrong way. Some of the wrong ways would include just keeping quiet. Avoiding communication as a general rule is sinful. Some husbands don't communicate much at all in order to avoid conflict. We cannot obey God in our marriage without really communicating with our spouse. And it's very easy for bitterness to grow when we just keep quiet. Another way is staying away from one another. This really is not an option for Christians. God commands wives to respect their husbands and husbands to love their wives. And those commands can't be fulfilled if there is isolation in the marriage. Another wrong way would include changing the subject or hiding information. Now, what are some God honoring ways to avoid conflict? First, we should seek to know our spouse well and appreciate and understand their perspective. We should gather plenty of data before speaking. We should pray, study the word, and think about the issue before speaking. We should demonstrate or communicate our love and care at the time of disagreement. We should listen more than we speak, but we should speak. In matters of sin, we should approach our spouse in love. In matters of preference, we should prefer one another. In matters of wisdom and conscience, we should search the scriptures and get godly counsel. We should refuse to sin in our communication. And lastly, we should be more interested in God's glory and the other's good rather than having our own way or being right. You know, one of the best ways to avoid conflict with another person who is angry with you is to give a gentle and caring answer to their angry words. As Proverbs 15.1 says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. For example, if your spouse is upset, you can say something like, I can see you're upset. Let's sit down and talk about it. I do love you and I want to work this out. Now let's talk about ways to resolve conflict. Again, there are right and wrong ways to resolve conflict. Let's look at some sinful ways to resolve conflict. The first example is to let time heal it. Healing alone is not what is needed or what honors God when conflict has taken place. What is needed is confession, forgiveness, and repentance. God wants his children to deal with sin quickly. Another example is to try and bury it. But this can easily result in more sin, bitterness, depression, and even physical sickness. Sometimes people also pretend that it never happened. This sinful way to resolve conflict is one way to really irritate your spouse. Another wrong way to resolve conflict is to wait for the other person to initiate the resolution process. This approach is in direct violation of God's command to go and seek to resolve any problem someone has with you, as it tells us in Matthew 5. The last example is to punish the other person until they change and take all the blame. People may give their spouse the silent treatment, or be harsh with them, or even leave. But this method of dealing with conflict is only heaping sin upon sin. Now let's look at some of the biblical ways to resolve conflict. First, we must confess any sin that we are aware of to God. And we must go to our spouse and ask for forgiveness for each thing we did specifically, 
and discuss our plan not to do those things again. We should express the desire to resolve the conflict fully and decide together when the best time to do that would be. We should pray together for God's wisdom and self-control and speech. We should know God's rules of communication, which include being a good listener, speaking the truth, speaking in love, speaking with the right purposes, mainly God's glory and the other's good, and speaking as clearly as possible. Each person should take a turn to confess any sin that has not been confessed to God and to the spouse and ask for forgiveness. We should discuss the issues that precipitated the conflict. As you talk, ask yourself these questions. Is this a preference issue? Then discuss ways to prefer one another. Is this a sin issue? Then discuss a repentance plan. Is it a conscience issue? Then study the word together and get counsel. Is it a wisdom issue? Then gather facts, study the word, get counsel, and have each spouse give input. Then the husband should make a biblical leadership decision, and the wife should submit and trust in God's sovereignty unless the husband is asking her to sin. Lastly, in your discussion, decide on specific steps to resolve the issues and begin carrying out the appropriate steps to resolve them. Decide if and when you need to discuss the issue again and end your time together with prayer and an expression of love. Avoiding conflict and resolving conflict takes lots of practice. However, the good news is if you persevere through the learning process, you will begin to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Handling conflict God's way will cause love and unity to grow in your marriage and both of you to grow in wisdom. If you have questions or need marriage counseling, you can contact me at mclark707 at yahoo.com and I would love to answer your questions or help you. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.